my kitchen. So in this video, I really wanted to share with you how I make one of my favorite cake fillings and cake coverings, and that is chocolate ganache. So whether you want to make milk chocolate, dark chocolate, or white chocolate, I will talk you through the process and show you how I make my ganache. So I also have an extra video for you, and that is how I make the chocolate cake that is featured in this video. So if you want to see the recipe for that chocolate cake, then I'll put the link in the description below and at the end of the video. Okay, let's make some ganache. Okay, so to make the ganache, there are actually only two ingredients. You've got chocolate and double cream. A good thing to remember about double cream is 100 ml weighs around 100 grams. So to work out how much of the ingredients you'll need, this all comes down to ratios. Now when dealing with milk chocolate or dark chocolate ganache, this is a ratio of 2 to 1. So for every 100 ml of double cream you've got, you would use 200 grams of chocolate. Okay, so for white chocolate, the ratios are slightly different, and this is because white chocolate contains no cocoa solids. It's made from cocoa butter, sugar, and milk, so it has a very different fat content. So the ratio of white chocolate to double cream is actually 3 to 1. So this means that for every 100 ml of double cream, you would use 300 grams of chocolate. Okay, so my little tip with white chocolate is actually just to do a trial and error, just because different brands have different fat contents. So you might find that using a ratio of three to one might give you a very thick ganache, or it might be a little bit too thin, so you would need to add some more chocolate, but it's really worth giving it a bit of a trial and error. Okay, so for this video, I'm gonna make a batch of milk chocolate ganache, and I'm gonna use 600 grams of milk chocolate to 300 ml of double cream. Now this should make enough to fill and cover a six inch cake, which is about four inches high. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually break down the chocolate into smaller pieces. Now one tip that I would give you is to just use normal chocolate, so chocolate you would just buy for eating. Now the reason for this is because cooking chocolate and chocolate chips have a higher melting threshold, so it's a lot harder to make ganache with those. Okay, so now we have our smaller pieces of chocolate in our bowl. I'm just gonna take a saucepan and add in my double cream. Okay, so now I have our double cream in the saucepan. I'm gonna take this over to the cooker and just heat this on a medium heat until the cream is boiling. Okay, so once your cream is boiling, you wanna pour that onto your chocolate and then keep stirring until all of your chocolate has melted. Okay, so if your ganache still has any lumps of chocolate left in there that haven't melted, you may just wanna pop it into the microwave on 10 second bursts just until that has melted. Okay, so what we're actually looking for is a silky smooth consistency for your ganache. Now, the state that it is at the moment is quite runny, so this would be the stage that you would use if you wanted to use it for drips on a drip cake. So as you can see, it's still kind of runny enough that it would run down the side of your cake. Okay, so if you want to fill a cake or cover a cake with your ganache, what we're looking for is a consistency that can be spread without it running off the cake. So what I like to do is leave the mixture to set slightly um, at room temperature just until it cools down. You can then pop it in the fridge um, for 10 minute intervals. So after 10 minutes, I just make sure that I give it a good stir just so the outside is not setting and the middle is still runny. So we want that consistency throughout. Okay, so once your ganache has become a lot more of a spreadable consistency, um, this ganache is ready to cover your cake. Okay, so you can use this just like it is to cover and fill your cake. Um, but if you're looking for a more of a moussey consistency, for the filling of your cake or you wish to pipe your ganache maybe onto cupcakes then we're going to use a different method so i've split the ganache into two so i've put half of it in another bowl so i can use it for the outside of the cake so what we're actually going to do is use an electric hand whisk and just mix this up which is going to just allow air into the ganache and make it a lot more fluffy which is perfect for the filling Thank you. 
So as you can see, this has been mixed up and this is a lot more fluffier. So this is perfect to fill your cakes with. Okay, so this is the other half of my ganache, which I'm gonna use for spreading onto the outside of cakes. Now, as you can see, this is at a spreading consistency. This has been in the fridge for around half an hour, and I've just been making sure that that's kind of stirred so that it doesn't set too solid. Now, the reason that with this half, I haven't used the electric mixer is just because it won't go as moussey and as fluffy. So it's a bit better for the outside just because it sets a little bit more solid. So this is perfect for covering the outside of your cake. Okay, so whether you're using milk, dark or white chocolate, this is the recipe to make ganache. And here is an example of one of my cakes covered and filled with the milk chocolate ganache. Okay, so before I go, I just wanted to address um, what happens when ganache goes wrong and how to fix it. So in the process of making ganache, sometimes the mixture can get too hot. This sometimes happens if it's been remelted in the microwave. The mixture can either become very greasy or it can actually separate. So the fat separates away from the chocolate. So the trick to save the ganache is with milk. So if you warm a little bit of milk and add this a small piece at a time, so maybe a few tablespoons at a time, making sure that you're mixing the mixture as you add it. This will bind the ganache back together and create that smooth texture that you're looking for. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and it helps you in making your own ganache, whether it's for drip cakes, for filling cakes, or for covering cakes. If you did like this video, then please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more of my videos and my recipes, then please click subscribe. Also, don't forget to head over to my Instagram and Facebook pages. Bye.